our Bible reading for today comes from Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 to 9. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. And great crowds gathered to him so that he got out, he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach and he told them many things in parables, saying, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell along the path and the birds came and devoured it. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and immediately they sprang up since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seed fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Well, welcome to Renewal. My name is Justin and uh, loving bringing you our third message in our Breaking Ground series. I'm in the building in our solid hole site where we're, this is the building that we're going to be transforming into a youth and community space for young people in the community to develop in life, creativity and faith. And so literally as a church in the coming months we'll be breaking ground. The Builders will be coming in and we'll be breaking the ground on this building project. But we're also thinking about, as the people of God, who do we need to be in order to break ground, both individually and corporately? You know, you break ground when you do something new, something groundbreaking, something that has not been done before, when you step into new areas when you reach new groups of people when as the people of God we see the kingdom of God extend in ways we've not seen before we want to be a people that can break ground so today I want us to think about our necks I wonder how much time and appreciation you've given to the neck I wonder how much neck you have. Maybe you have a tall and long, elegant neck. Maybe you're pretty butch and you don't really have a neck. Maybe you've got a strong neck. Maybe you've got a weak neck. If you're with someone at the moment, just give them a casual side eye and just have a look. What kind of neck do they have? We're going to camp in a uh, a couple of the Old Testament prophets today. We're going to look at some passages from Hosea and a passage from Jeremiah as God calls his people to break up a certain type of ground. So the book of Hosea, the, the people of God, they've been living in the lands that God has given them in the Old Testament, but they've abandoned God. They've started to worship idols. They've forgotten who God is and God's ways and they're about to lose ground so, so the, the kingdom of Israel has split into two Hosea is speaking to the northern kingdom and as he speaks the nation of Assyria is kind of breathing down their necks ready to take them off into captivity and in Hosea chapter 10 Hosea says this how prosperous Israel is a luxuriant vine loaded with fruit. But the richer the people get, the more pagan altars they build. The more bountiful their harvests, the more beautiful their sacred pillars. The hearts of the people are fickle. They are guilty and must be punished. The Lord will break down their altars and smash their sacred pillars. You see, Israel have had it good for so long. It's been so many years now since Joshua and his contemporaries crossed over the Jordan River and took Jericho and took the land. They've got used to having it easy. Really poetic language, how, how prosperous Israel is, like a luxuriant vine. You guys have just got grapes dripping off everything. You've had it so easy and yet you've forgotten who God is. G. Michael Hopf, in his 
uh, apocalyptic novel, Those Who Remain, makes this famous statement. He said, hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. And weak men create hard times. That's kind of where Israel are at. They've been able to be self-reliant. They've not had to break any new ground. They've not had to fight any new enemies. And so they've just kind of got used to going with the flow, enjoying the abundance, enjoying all of God's blessings. But in that, they've forgotten who God is. Later on in Hosea chapter 10, he, he goes on to say this, verse 10, Now whenever it fits my plan, I will attack you too. I will call out the armies of the nations to punish you for your multiplied sins. Israel is like a trained heifer treading out the grain. An easy job she loves, but I will put a heavy yoke on her tender neck. I will force Judah to pull the plough and Israel to break up the hard ground. I said, plant good seeds of righteousness and you will harvest a crop of love. Plough up the hard ground of your hearts, for now is the time to seek the Lord, that he may come and shower righteousness upon you. Again, this beautiful language, Israel's like this trained heifer with a tender neck threshing out the grain. In, in ancient farming practices, or, or, or sometimes in farming practices today where there's not access to mechanical equipment, the way you would separate the grain from its sheaf that it's on and the husk that surrounds it, once you've harvested it from the field, farmers would spread the grain out on the floor, normally on a slightly raised place, that, that'll become important in a minute, and then would get the cows to trample over the grain. And as the cows walk round and round in circles, trampling over the grain, the pressure of their hooves splits open the husks so that the grain can be separated from the husk and the chaff. And then once they've had a little wander around for a while, the, the farmer comes along with a fork and throws it all up into the air. And as the wind blows, which is why you need to be up high, the lighter chaff and husk gets blown away and the heavy ground falls to the ground. It's a way of separating out the grain from everything else that you don't want. And, and if you're a cow, this is the kind of job you want, because this is easy. At worst, you're going to have a wooden board attached to some rope and tied around your neck. But often, just the weight of the cow themselves is enough to split open the grain. Not only that, there is a law in the Old Testament that stops farmers from putting a muzzle over their cows as they're treading out the grain. So if as you're treading around you get a bit hungry, the cows can kind of nom 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 nom. They can have a little nibble whilst they're working. They can tread out the grain, an easy job, and they get to eat at the same time. Like what a dream job. Not too much hard work and you get to eat uh, whilst you're doing it. But here's the thing. If cows only ever tread the grain, but they never break up the ground, eventually there'll be no ground. There'll be no grain to tread. God says to Israel, you've had it easy for too long. You've been treading out the harvest and eating what you want but now I'm calling you to break up the hard ground. Now that's a hard job, because rather than just a bit of wood dragging behind you, you've now got a plow attached to your neck. And rather than just dragging that over some loose grain, that plow is digging into hard ground. And the cow's neck, the oxen's neck, is going to strain and pull as they're pulling forward. And whilst they're doing it, there's nothing to eat. You're breaking up the hard ground. This is a difficult job. I wonder spiritually, how strong are our necks? My favourite church gathering uh, throughout the year has to be a baptism gathering. 
I love a baptism gathering. I love hearing the, the, the baptism candidates talk about all that Jesus has done in their lives. I love the sense of praise and worship and celebration in the room as we celebrate new life. We see people bury their old life under the water and raise to new life in Christ. It's brilliant. It's fantastic. And everyone is always buzzing and excited. It's just brilliant. But you know, three times a year, for 12 Thursday nights on the trot, our Alpha team come out week after week and they sit with those who are exploring faith and they share their life stories and they answer any questions. And sometimes people are quite difficult and tricky with them as they're trying to figure out who Jesus is. And often they do this after a long, hard day at work and they rush home to get the dinner, shove it down their face and get out of the door to get back to renewal. And there's no band. There's no room full of people cheering them on. Uh, there's no staff around going, wow, this is amazing. They are plowing up the hard ground. And they do that for 12 weeks in a row so that we can come together for an evening and celebrate all that new life. Do you know, when, when I get to host a baptism gathering, that's an easy job I love. That fills me up. That blesses me. But, you know, someone has had to plough up the ground in order for that to happen. You know, when you see this building and we've got sports spaces and performance spaces and we've got youth and young adults hanging out here and bringing their friends in and we've got people coming to work from home but instead to work from our facilities here and we see the first bit of digital content that a young person puts out or the first creative company that gets launched and the first young adult that finds faith in Christ we're going to be celebrating and rejoicing and we're going to be going wow this is amazing look this building looks Looks brilliant look at what God's done and I'll get myself a nice latte while I enjoy it we'll celebrate the harvest but in order to get there there's going to have to be some of us that go maybe I have a slightly smaller holiday this year maybe I sacrifice a regular treat that I enjoy maybe there's some way that I can deny myself so that I can give sacrificially into something that somebody else is going to enjoy. When we open this building, there will be celebration and praise. And we'll be like that lovely heifer chomping around the grain going, oh, the harvest is great. Look what God's done. And nom, 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 nom. We can fill up on it too. But whose necks are going to bear the burden and the strain of raising the finance that we need to see it become a reality. I love the corporate worship experience when there's, when there's hundreds of us in a room singing together and the presence of God is amongst us. But what about worship when you open up your emails on Monday and your boss is making an unreasonable demand? What about worship when you're tired and you're rinsed out and that friend texts you again to borrow the same thing again or to ask for the same favour again or to ask for your help again and you're like, ah, oh, I'm tired. Is Jesus worth it all in those moments? Is your life surrendered and laid down to him in those moments? Because it's great to enjoy the harvest time. But in order to keep enjoying that, we have got to keep breaking up the hard ground. Don't, don't hear me wrong. Those harvest easy moments where we're enjoying the blessings of all that God has done are great. And they are to be enjoyed. But also we've got to engage with the ploughing difficult moments. Jeremiah 4, it says a very similar message to the, to the southern kingdom of down in Jerusalem before they're carted off to Babylon. And he brings a similar message that Hosea brought to the northern kingdom. He says, plow up the hard ground of your hearts. Do not waste your good seed among thorns. 
O people of Judah and Jerusalem, surrender your pride and your power. Change your hearts before the Lord or my anger will burn like an unquenchable fire because of all your sins. I love that. Do not waste your good seed on hard ground, the hard ground of your heart. You know, in anything, it's, it's always the preparation, isn't it? Our house needs a bit of redecorating at the moment and I'm trying to weigh up whether it's worth it or whether the kids will just trash the paint in the same amount of time as they've trashed the last set of paint that I've put on. But whenever I come to decorate, I kind of just want to open the tin, stick the roller in and start slapping it on the walls. But you know, a decorator, like a professional, somebody who wants to do a proper job, they'll sand down all of the walls. They'll wash it with sugar soap. They'll fill all of the gaps and wait for the filler to dry and then sand it off again. And then maybe they'll even prime it. There's so many steps of preparation before they put on the final coat. When I plant something in the garden, I'm like, just dig a hole, shove it in, fill the hole and off we pop. I want a cup of tea. But you know, gardeners, real gardeners, They'll spend ages digging the hole and they'll remove all the stones and the weeds and the rubbish that are in the soil. And then they'll get this like testing kit to see what's the acidity level of the soil like. And is it good soil for this particular type of plant? Or do I need to add something to the soil? Do I need to treat it? What do I need to do in order to make sure this plant is going to flourish? And then and only then will the plant go in to the ground. And that's so much hard work. The preparation of anything is always hard work. I don't know if we've got any Grand Designs fans watching where people with a limited amount of money decide that they can live in a caravan and project manage a brand new building, even though they've never done it before. And they can do it in 12 months. They'll be in just before Christmas and they'll get it under for just under £300,000. And you have the just ever gracious Kevin MacLeod smugly looking on going, you will never do this. And it always takes longer and it always costs more. And Kevin's always really nice about it at the end. It's just a lovely program to watch. But you know, when those big projects go wrong, they never go wrong when the paint's going on the wall or when the kitchen's been fitted. They go wrong when they start to dig into the ground. They go wrong when they start the preparatory works because until you start digging, you've got no idea what is under the ground. Back in 2016, when we put the new building into Chelmsley, the builders actually came and bored five foot holes into the ground in lots of different places because they were trying to figure out what's underneath the surface here. Because if what's underneath isn't right, then this project is going to run into problems. You see, before we can break out, before we can enjoy the harvest, before we can see God break through us, both individually and corporately, we've got to plow up the hard ground of our hearts. We've got to dig through the soil that's in here to make sure we're ready for all that God is going to do. Back in kind of the 90s, early 2000s, there was this kind of popular myth that was going around that humans only use about 10% of their brain. And we kind of all wondered, what would it look like if we used all of our brain? Well, it's kind of been widely debunked now and we've got enough brain scans to prove that humans do actually use a lot of their brain. Most of their brain is kind of buzzing all of the time. Although if you look on social media, there's you know still some evidence to the contrary, but we do use 100% of our brain. But I wonder if we use 100% of our hearts. Both Hosea and Jeremiah say to God's people, the fallow ground in your heart. There's areas inside of you that actually God can't use for his kingdom. There's fields and landscapes inside of your heart that could be producing something for the kingdom of God, but it can't be used because it's fallow. It's not been dug up. 
It's not been prepared enough. The Spirit is calling us to move from easy to hard. There are some hard conversations we need with the Spirit of God. There are some hard conversations we need with each other. There are some things in our hearts that need digging up. It started off with the parable of the sower. I wonder if Jesus and his hearers have got this kind of image from Hosea and Jeremiah in mind as Jesus is telling this story. Uh, and a sower goes out to sow and there's different types of soil. Now, now the, the seed is the word of God, but the soil is our hearts. And the first type of soil is just compacted path. It's, it's a well-worn path that people have walked up and down. So the soil has got compacted down. And when the word of God comes, it lands on top. But because it's not been dug up, it can't get underneath. And so the enemy comes, Satan comes and distracts and takes away what God is trying to say. I wonder what the well-worn paths in our heart are. What are some of the fixed mindsets, the fixed approaches, the things that we've held dear, the ways we've done things we've always done? And God's saying, I want my word to come in and do something new. But you've just got this well-trodden path that you keep walking down. And actually what you need is to allow the spirit of God to disorient you, to confuse you, to go through that painful process of going, God, I thought I knew this about you, but now you're digging it up and you're changing this all around so that you can dig up the soil of my heart so that your word can go down deep. I remember a few years ago where I was doing lots of plans in my role here at Renewal and lots of things that I kind of wanted to see happen in the different areas I'm responsible for. And I remember the spirit just whispering to me, Justin, do you want me to fulfill your plans or can I be God? And like my first reaction was, I want you to fulfill my plans. Like I've worked hard at these. These are the well-trodden paths that I want to walk down. Actually, God is saying, will you let me do something new? Will you let me dig up those things in your hearts so that my word can produce a new harvest in you? Because if you leave that soil compacted, when God wants to do something new, the enemy will just come and take it away. The second type of soil it is those with rocks in it. So there's soil, but there's lots of boulders, there's lots of builders' rubbish, everything's kind of been chucked in there. The soil's okay, there's just not enough of it. And so the word of God comes and immediately you see things sprout up, but the moment it gets difficult, the roots aren't deep enough. You know, when you're digging through soil and you hit a boulder, it's really hard work to get it out. The more boulders that are in there, the harder the soil is to dig. You know, we can have those moments in the presence of God where we're like, yeah, Jesus, I surrender all. Yes, here I am, Lord, send me. Jesus, this week I'm going to be a carrier of your presence. And we get into Monday and we stick our fork into the ground and bang, we hit a rock. We hit a difficulty. We hit a persecution. Somebody treats us differently because of our faith. The things we thought were going to work out actually don't work out as they should. We want to stand for righteousness, but we realise it's actually going to put us at a disadvantage. And you know, that is the hard work. You're no longer just dancing around on the corn and having a nice eat. You're having to strain in your neck. You're having to say, God, help me overcome these difficulties. Get these boulders out of my heart so that your work can go down deep. The third type of soil has got thorns growing up in it. Again, the soil's good. The seed lands, it starts to grow, but then other things just choke it out. It's kind of what happens to Israel in Hosea and Jeremiah. The, the worship of idols and other gods had just slowly crept in and eventually the thorns had started to choke out what God 
was doing. I wonder what's distracting us. I wonder what's choking out the work of God in our life. I wonder what thorns are growing in our heart that God is saying, hey, I could be using your heart to see my kingdom extended, but your heart's too busy growing thorns. It's choking out what I want to do. If we're going to be a people that can keep breaking ground, can keep lifting up the name of Jesus, can keep seeing the gospel go from one to many, that can go from being a family to being the people of God to then seeing a move of God amongst us. We're going to need all the fields of our heart to be available for use. You know, we're going to have great celebration moments, but there's going to have to be some hard plowing moments where we say, Jesus, if there's things in my heart that need digging up, new ways you want to do things. If there's boulders and rocks and difficulties that I'm going to come across, would you strengthen me to dig them out? If there's thorns in my heart, things that would distract me from you, would you give me the courage to grab them and to pull them out? You know, the seed is good, the soil is good, but we've got to make sure the soil's been dug up and we've taken out everything that shouldn't be there. If we are going to break ground and see the harvest increase among us, we are going to have to get strong necks and with the Spirit of God do the hard work of ploughing up the ground in our heart so that God can break into us so that he can then break out and break through through us. I wonder what the soil of your heart is like. And I wonder what areas you need to do some ploughing in. Hello, my name's Naomi. It's been great to have you with us for our message here at Renewal. If you want to find out more about what it means to follow Jesus, you can visit renewalcc.com forward slash next steps and you'll be sent a few videos which might answer some of those bigger questions that you might have. Likewise, maybe you just want to say hello to the team. So you can email hello at renewalcc.com. And then if you're really enjoying all of these videos, what you can do is click the subscribe button, which is the wonderful red button that you cannot miss on your screen to be notified of any other videos that come in. You can also listen to our messages on the go. So if you visit renewalcc.com forward slash media, you'll be able to see podcasts and then that will also link you to the YouTube channel. But maybe actually you just want to support the work that Renewal is doing. And you can do that by visiting renewalcc.com forward slash give and you can choose where your finance goes. All that's left to say is take care, God bless and have a great week. Hopefully we'll see you soon.